So, Murray, how have things been going at uh, Channel Odd Pod recently? Having fun with all of that retro nostalgic stuff? Murray, I didn't invite you over for you to have a nervous breakdown. Have some spaghetti. Okay. Sorry, um, I'm just so nervous. Don't be. So, what are you into? <sighs> Stuff this. Oh, Count Duckula! You like that cartoon? Uh, yeah, I used to watch it a lot as a kid with my dad. Oh, Count Duckula, a classic 80s cartoon about a vegetarian vampire duck. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Thanks to a ritual that went horribly wrong when tomato ketchup was mixed instead of blood. It is voiced by David Jason from such things as Only Fools and Horses, and he also did the voice for Danger Mouse, which is pretty cool. And yes, Duckula is an awesome cartoon from the 80s about the adventures of Count Duckula. Duckula. Hey, count Duckula. <laughs> awesome. I'm glad I found something that you're actually okay to talk to me about. Hey, I actually just got the game Duckula 2 on the ZX Spectrum. I mean, it's awful, but do you want to maybe play it with me? I'll take that as a no then. There were two Duckula games released for the ZX Spectrum. The first one, No Sax Please Were Egyptian, was based on the episode of the same name. Released in 1989 and developed by Enigma Variations, this is a fair to middling but playable adventure platformer in which you need to avoid mummies and find an ancient Egyptian saxophone with magical powers. It was also released for the Commodore 64, Amiga and the Amstrad CPC, but the Spectrum version is solid enough. Count Duckula 2 was released three whole years later in 1992, published by the same company, Alternative Software, but this time developed by The Conversion Company. I could find zero information about this company and they don't seem to have made anything else, so I would be surprised if it was just one person making the one game and then deciding development wasn't really for him or her. Just as the first game was based on the episode that is its namesake, Count Duckula 2 is based on the episode The Vampire Strikes Back, in which Duckula, Igor and Nanny find themselves blasted into space and eventually end up on the planet Cute. Like it. It's... it's... It's kinda cute. This is one of the weaker episodes, so it is an odd choice to go with for a game. But what is even more odd is how very little to do with the episode the game has. In the episode, Duckula's arch nemesis Goosewing has managed to blow one of the towers of the castle into orbit, with Duckula and his help Nanny and Igor inside. Duckula has spent most of this episode so far fawning over his hero, Tremendous Terence, and when Tremendous Terence himself appears to help them out, it blows his mind. Then Terence sends him to the dreaded planet Cute to be his own hero, which is when this game starts. Yes, I I couldn't have put it better myself. You don't get any of that information, by the way. It's all in the subtext. The first screen you'll see is the Tower of Castle Duckula flying through space. You need to avoid or shoot asteroids for which you will be awarded points. After a set amount of time, the ship will land on Planet Cute. I haven't seen a more redundant space shooter intro since the last time I played Star Fox Adventure. There really is no need for this intro. Seems like the devs were just trying to pad out the game. And it wasn't even fun, the controls are awkward and you can't shoot fast enough to stop the asteroids. But at least it's kind of like the episode, because that's where the similarities end. Planet Cute is a soft, fluffy, yummy, scrumptious planet full of bunnies and inhabitants that just want to make you happy. Full of rainbows and pixie dust. And here is Planet Cute in the game. Oh. Well, this is awful. There is nothing here even slightly reminiscent of the TV show. Who's this random woman down here? And what about this thing, walled up alive on the bottom right? That face is nightmare inducing. This isn't cute. 
Duckula isn't looking too well either. His eyes are now taking up the majority of his forehead, and he jumps like a plank of wood. In the bottom left of the screen are portraits of Duckula, Igor, and Nanny. I have no idea what they're for. Neither Igor or Nanny are ever playable, and these things look like health bars, but they never move. If you're wondering why you aren't hearing any sound effects, that's because the 48k version of Duckula 2 is completely silent. The 128k version had a few differences, but the main one was that it did actually have sound effects. It even says on the cover that it is a special 128k version. So basically, you have to have the special version to get the privilege of having sound. It is weird to play the 48k version because it has no sound. You really do expect some sound effects. In fact, when I initially played it, I thought there was something wrong with the sound on my TV. It just being dead silent when you shoot the gun and jump is really very sad. It doesn't get you invested in the game at all. You could only play that space shooter intro that I just showed you on the 128k version. You didn't get treated to that on the 48k version. Okay, so let's play the 128k version from now on. Maybe having sound effects will take the edge off this game. This gun, by the way, is a ketchup gun. And it doesn't take a lot before it runs out. Shoot that thing. Oh, you're awake? Shoot it. Why are you not shooting it? It's hard. The controls are like treacle. <laughs> Let me play. No, you've got bolognese all over your mitts. The controls really are bad, I can't explain it. On top of the fact that he only seems to jump when he wants to, especially when you're trying to jump in a direction, the reaction time Duckula has on pulling his ketchup gun out is so slow that you'll find yourself getting hit even when you think you had plenty of time. There's only two collectibles in this game. One is the ketchup bottles that you'll need to refill your gun, which, by the way, doesn't kill enemies, it only stuns them. The other is these small boxes marked corn. Now, these these are supposed to be the ripped box tops off a box of cereal that Duckula has been collecting in the TV episode. But if you didn't know that, you'd be wondering why the hell Duckula is going around picking up boxes of corn. In fact, I did have to look up what the hell they were supposed to be. It is a bit weird seeing a human-esque character in here too, because there are no humans in the TV show. There's one dude who appears in one episode who kind of looks human, but I always thought he was supposed to be a walrus. In fact, none of the enemies are anything like anything that appears in the cartoon at all ever. And the scenery? Well, uh... What is that? That is not from the Duckula series. That is from the depths of hell. There really aren't that many enemies to worry about. You usually get maybe one or two per screen. The biggest challenge you have is dealing with these disappearing platforms. Jump on the thing! Well, I am doing. But you're not jumping on it, you're falling off it! Well, that's because it keeps disappearing! Press the button! What button? I'm pressing it! Shoot the gun! Most of the game is just you trying to time yourself exactly right to step on or jump onto these appearing and disappearing platforms. And it takes ages for some of them to appear. <sighs> Wake up! Ah! Kitty! You will spend a lot of time just standing and waiting around for them. Another problem is the fall damage, which will kill you right away, even if you don't actually hit the floor. This is infuriating, because it really does mean that you have to wait around for these sodding platforms if you want to get to an area at the bottom of the screen. Look, instant death on falling five feet. Absolute bullshit. The full title of this game is Duckula 2 featuring Tremendous Terence. In the episode, he's the character that Duckula idolises as his hero. In the game, you press H and space at the same time, and he will appear and carry you to the next screen. You can only use him once though, until you meet up with Igor, and you'll only get to see Igor the first time on the 14th screen, and you need Tremendous Terence to beat one of the screens shortly after him. If you get there and you've already called him twice, you're stuck and you're gonna have to reset the game. Reset the game. I am doing. Well, do it! <laughs> I am! <laughs> you will see Igor one more time after that, but at that point, you're likely to have pulled out your own eyes from boredom anyway. Once you finally manage to traverse 30 screens of eye-bleedingly boring platforming, you're treated to the end screen. Here's Tremendous Terence smuggling balloons, Nanny with a fascist's moustache, and Duckula with an inexplicable aerial balanced on his head. Well, that made playing it all worth it. No, it didn't. That's rubbish. That's the joke. Oh. 
The game was also released for the Amstrad CPC and is just as unplayable on there. The Amiga and Commodore 64 versions are much less offensive to the eyes and do control better, plus you get an intro. But ultimately, it is still an awful game even with these improvements. Whoa! N nanny you, you okay? You okay? Oh, Nanny's being on the sunbeds again, I see. Oh, that big hideous dead thing on the first screen of the Spectrum game was a ragdoll. This is the best they could do? Okay, okay, all right, all right. For some reason, a Sinclair user gave the ZX Spectrum version an incredibly generous rating of 64%, despite noting that the lack of sound in the 48K version pretty much killed it. Your Sinclair was more reasonable and gave it 9%. Honestly, I'm not sure I would even give it that. A game this difficult to control and being released in 1992 really has no excuse. This was the year that the ZX Spectrum was discontinued, so there'd already been hundreds of better games released for the computer. There were plenty of games released in the Spectrum's final year of production, but very few of them look as bad as this does. Take a look at Codemasters Crystal Kingdom Dizzy, or what about Gremlin Graphics Space Crusade, or Ocean Software's Robocop 3? How about High Tech's Turbo the Tortoise? All released in the same year and look and play miles better. Heck, even the first Duckula game looked miles better and that was released three years before. Wow, that was truly an awful game. No wonder it's often called the worst Zerg Spectrum game ever made. What a shame it had to be about our favourite cartoon. Oh well, I had fun playing it with you. Yeah, I had fun. <laughs> Oh, I think that's your lift. Come in, Dan! Hey guys, Murray, you have a good evening? Meep. Alrighty then. Hope we didn't give you too much trouble. No, not at all. We talked about Duckula and then we played one of the worst ZX Spectrum games ever made. It's actually the nicest date that I've had in a long while. Ah! Great. Well, come on, let's go home. Night, Octavius. Well, say good night then. Good night, Octavius. And um, thank you for dinner. Bye. I love you. Wow, nostalgia really does bring people together. And puppets. Mm. Ah! And as the evening draws dark, and the anguished cries of a lover scorned pierce the chill London air, we bid good night to Castle Octavius. Good night out there, whatever you are. <laughs> yeah, I know, the banana thing was a mistake.